Today is a very important day as we gather together as a church. Albeit online, we gather together as one to remember all those who suffered and died fighting for our freedoms. Let us now all please stand to show our respect and give thanks for their sacrifice with a two minute silence, promising never to forget. This year's Remembrance Sunday is of course very different, but today, in the midst of this global pandemic, we take a moment to reflect on the extraordinary sacrifices the previous generations made for the world and the freedoms that we all enjoy today. As we think of them, it does give me pleasure to be here today, virtually amongst you all, joining in today's act of remembrance. And I'm privileged to be asked to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today's reading is taken from John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. And it's such a beautiful verse. It reads, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, 
just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no, no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made, made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command to you, so that you will love one another. Amen. Revelation 21 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. 
And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures free. He leads me by. Yo 
You have often heard it said that religion causes war. This is a common thought, isn't it? But it's absolute nonsense. It's a myth. According to the Encyclopedia of Wars, out of all of the 1,763 known and recorded historical conflicts, just 123 had religion as their alleged primary cause. That's around 6%. And very, very few of these were Christian. Although nobody should be killing anyone in the name of Jesus. So one is one too many. Now, if we compare this to, to the conflicts caused by the alternative worldview, if we take the 10,000 odd years of recorded human history and look together at just a 30 year period between 1940 and 1970, you will see three atheist regimes, three governments who attempted to remove God from their societies. Nazi Germany, Stalin's communist Russia and Chairman Mao's communist China. And you will see that in just 30 years, they killed 150 million people. In just 30 years, these three atheist regimes killed many, many, many times more people than all religious conflicts put together throughout human history. Interesting. Friends, this is a historical fact. When you remove God from a society, war is more likely. Friends, it is not religion that causes war. It is us. Humanity. So why is this? Well, the Bible tells us the simple answer is sin. We dethrone God to do what we want to do in our lives. And this usually comes at a cost to others, causing conflict. One of our nation's finest academics, C.S. Lewis, he hit the nail on the head when he said, human history is the long and terrible story of mankind trying to find something other than God which will make him happy. And I believe he is right. Friends, this is the real cause of war. This is the real cause of every conflict that we face in our daily lives. It is all caused by our natural desire to seek happiness in something other than God whether this is in some kind of material possession or lustful ambition or in an ideological or political view that is contrary to the Bible or in some kind of personal achievement. Friends, every point of contention that we face in this life is simply because we are looking for happiness in the wrong places. We are looking for happiness in something other than God, in something that will eventually and inevitably let us down, in something that at best will rust and decay and grow old and ultimately die with us. And as human beings, we are mad enough to fight over such things whether it is over land or resources or power or a parking space at Tesco. From birth, 
We fight over our toys. We fight over games. We fight over who scored what goal and when. We fight over girlfriends. We fight over boyfriends. We fight over the TV remote controls. We fight over iPhone chargers. We fight over hedge disputes. We fight over who's got the nicest car or home or the better job or who has been on the nicest holidays or whatever. And we all do this in the utter belief that each little victory that we have over something or someone else will make us happier. But ultimately, it never, ever does. Because in the grand scheme of things, we all know, deep, deep down, that none of it, none of it really matters. All of it, all that we can do or own, at best, has a very limited shelf life. But our souls do not. And deep down, we all know this to be true. Deep down, even the biggest sceptic knows it. Even the biggest sceptic knows that what really matters in this life comes in knowing the reality of what comes next. And until we solve this inner conflict in our hearts, until we find peace with God and know with all of our heart that our place in heaven is secure, friends, we will forever be trying to fill this void that this inner conflict causes with pointless things of, of this world. Until we find peace with God, we will never have peace within ourselves and humanity will never have peace on earth. And we will forever be having peace remembrance services such as this one today. So the question is, how do we find such peace? A peace that can lift us above our worldly desires, a peace that can lift us above any conflict that we could have with our fellow man. Well, friends, the Bible is clear. We can't find or attain this peace by ourselves. No amount of good works or piety will ever undo our past failures. No amount of stretching in the garden and meditation can take away our regrets. No amount of charitable deeds can remove our guilt and shame. No more than good behaviour can acquit a murderer for his crimes. No, the only way to know peace with God is to know God himself. It is to know his love, his grace and his mercy to us. And the only way to know God is to live in the faith that he became a person so that you could know him personally. Friends, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The only way to know God is to live in the faith that he entered into the time and space that he created and became history just for you. The only way to have peace with God is to trust that he came, he really came to live the perfect life that you could not, obedient to the Father in heaven in every way and took his perfect life to the cross at Calvary to die your death and bury your sin, to then rise again, giving freely to all those who believe in him eternal life through this cosmic exchange 
of immeasurable love. Friends, this is the gospel. This is the good news that in Christ Jesus, God has made a way through the cross for all those who have dethroned him in the past to come and have a fresh start with him. So I plead with you all today to do this, to come back to God, the God who you know deep, deep down is really there. Receive Jesus's gift of himself and know his love and joy and peace and forgiveness and rest of soul. A peace that puts all of what you have fought for in the past into perspective. A peace that lifts you above any conflict of man. A peace that gives you the absolute certainty that whatever happens to you today, this week or whenever, that you are going to be okay. Amen. service today. Let me ask you a quick question. Before you sat down to watch this video, did you check your seat? Did you pick it up, examine it to see if it holds your weight? No, you didn't. You sat down by faith. Now, if you want to know the forgiveness of sins and have a fresh start today, Take that same faith and put it in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour and you will know everlasting life. And then come and see us at Norfolk Church. Amen.